the AI browser war is heating up, there is now AI in your toilet, all that and more in this week's AI news segment. So let's start off with the news of the week. ChatGPT released something called Atlas, which is their browser that is built off Chromium with their own built-in AI features. So if you don't know, I did a full coverage on this Atlas browser earlier this week, but I'm going to quickly summarize and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the browser. So it has this whole unlock the web with ChatGPT by your side. It has this little ask ChatGPT everywhere you go, and you can always ask it questions. It's going to give you like these preset prompts. It's going to say, hey, do you want to know this or know that about whatever is on your page? So that is the first AI feature that they have, but also there's a full-fledged agent built in. So you can say, hey, I want to book tickets to a flight, and this is where I'm going. Can you find me tickets? Or can you send off an email? Or can you do all these different things for me? And you can see what it looks like in the background here, as I'm showing you their video, their built-in video. But from my tests, the AI works pretty well, but it still hallucinates, which is not something you want, especially if you're having it purchase stuff for you. But then also add on that the browser itself has a lot of things missing that makes a browser good. So for example, the bookmark system isn't the greatest and the whole URL bar isn't that great or the search bar isn't that great. And I go into more details. So if you wanna watch the full video, you can do that. But ChatGPT did release Atlas, which is their browser based off Chromium. Browsers isn't the only new area OpenAI wants to get into. They also wanna expand into music. OpenAI's next move, making music and sparking creative mayhem. <laughs> the real headline is right here. OpenAI headed into the music game. Time to cue billions of songs, lawsuits, and the next chapter of Creator versus Machine. So there is some internal discussion that got leaked out suggesting that OpenAI is working on music where you can create music with text and audio prompts, kind of similar to other things that we have seen. So they actually suggest it's similar to Sora and how you can use a text prompt. It's going to create a video with audio, but this time around it was create full-fledged songs, full-fledged music. And the project aims to support multiple use cases from ad jingles to video background to full length compositions. This follows OpenAI's previous now retired experiments, Music AI, MuseNet 2019, and Jukebox 2020. So Suno AI already exists and you can use it to create music and it is very good at creating music. You can put a prompt and it gives you a full song and Suno AI is also facing tons of lawsuits as we speak because of copyright problems but at the same token by adding music generation into the ChatGPT ecosystem it is just giving users one more reason to stay in the ecosystem so if you have a bunch of stuff on ChatGPT you have all your system prompts you have all your GPTs you have all your data it remembers all your data you can search through it's really getting to know you it just adds another layer of compliance complexity to try to hook you in and keep you on the platform. And this is actually something I've given a lot of thought to over the last couple of years. If you think about a phone, a phone keeps you in the ecosystem based off different apps that you purchase and the money and time you invest into the ecosystem itself. So if you have an iPhone, chances are you're going to stick with your iPhone because you've invested a lot of money and time to perfect what you want out of your Apple device. And the same goes with Android users. And there are people that switch and jump around and uh for ai i jump around to whatever's the best at the given month because right now what is the hook what is the grabbing factor that keeps you in the ecosystem and i think as they add more and more features more and more ability to do stuff and as the model gets to know me better it's able to tailor to what i want and what i need the same token OpenAI has to be careful because if you look at Sora, and we covered this in the last couple of weeks, all the copyright issues that Sora's had and all the pending lawsuits that will be coming based off all the copyrighted content that Sora has created. So I don't know how you guys feel about this, but what are your thoughts on AI making music? Again, it already exists. You can go to Suno AI, but I will be really interested to see what OpenAI comes up with because they are much bigger than Suno AI. And this is a feature you should expect sometime at the end of 2026 or sometime in the beginning of 2027. All right, back to the browser wars. I promised you AI browser wars and we will continue. So we now have Copilot, 
which is going to be a companion to Edge. So it can summarize content on a web page that you're on, a PDF or video you're viewing. It can generate images. You can get a personalized daily briefing right on your browser using Copilot. You can chat to it. You can share what's on your screen. Copilot will have more information about you to customize and personalize to you. And does this sound familiar to what I was just talking about? more hooks to grab you and pull you in. So I find that the browser scene with AI, it's very much like ask AI about what's on the page. That's kind of where we're at right now. The only one that is slightly different is Norton Neo, which I've also covered this past week. They have some pretty cool AI features that aren't in the other ones, like tab grouping that automatically groups your tabs using AI. Claude also has a new update to Claude Code. So there is now Claude Code on the web and there is an iOS app. So if you go to the web version, you can actually link your GitHub profile. It will pull your repository and now you can start coding or vibe coding with Claude Code right on the web without an IDE. They've also added support for plugins and skills in the Claude Agent SDK. And the plugins and skills is something actually covered in last week's new segment, which is really cool. Skills are fantastic. You can upload data and information and build an actual skill that your AI agent can reference whenever it needs it. And that's pretty amazing. Claude Code's UI also has some tweaks, so it looks a lot better than before. And then they fixed many, many bugs. So Claude Code is getting a lot better and there is an iOS app. So let's hope for an Android app so more people can experience Vibe Code. Amazon delivery drivers are now wearing glasses, very much like mine, but theirs has AI. Once a driver parks in front of the house, they have the glasses on. It's going to tell them which package to get out of the back of the truck. It's going to give them step-by-step -step instructions of where to go and how to walk up to the house. It's going to help them take the photo of the package on the doorstep. It just really simplifies the entire process. It just helps the driver speed up the entire process so they can deliver the package faster so they can deliver more. And you can see here, this is what they look like. This guy is wearing them. And if we continue to scroll down, you can actually see what I'm talking about with the packages. So you can see the guy picks it up. There's an X. He picks up this one. He's like, okay, this is the package that you need. So it just makes everything a little bit faster. And speaking about faster, Instagram is adding meta AI editing tools directly to stories. In this example here, you can click your story. You can hit the little pencil icon in the top right, and then you can get even a prompt and you can change the entire style of your photo. And you can see here, now it is an alien abduction from just a person standing there. You can also use it to remove unwanted things out of the photo. So in this example here, they remove people out of the background. So it's just the couple holding hands. And they also have some presets that you can just quickly use. All right, so that is really cool, but let's move on to Earth. Google has something called Google Earth AI, and they're adding more features and more people are going to have access to it in the near future. Google is introducing a combined model. So before they had like population, they had weather, they had satellite imagery. Now it's all together in one model, one spot, and you can ask it questions all using all three combined. So now can answer complex questions like which cities are most vulnerable to storms. Google Earth is also being updated with AI, so users can ask it more natural questions. If you're using Google Cloud APIs, some trusted testers now have access to all the APIs to access data to create some pretty cool applications. And some organizations like the World Health Organization are already using it to help predict outbreaks. Also this week, Jensen said NVIDIA went from 95% market share, which is huge, in China down to 0%. Can't imagine any other policymaker thinking that was a good idea. Jensen really got into China and the US and AI and like the chip limitations. And he said that half the world researchers are in China with AI. And the fact that they can't sell chips there is a bad thing because we are limiting the expansion of AI. I'm not going to share too many thoughts on this because I want to keep this channel to just AI focused. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I knew you waited the entire time just for this segment of this week's news video. It is AI poop time. So this is the toilet camera that analyzes your poop. So it's this device here. It sits on the rim of your toilet. It costs $600 and it, it takes pictures every single time you go to the bathroom, every single time you poop. It takes a photo of it. And they said that it will not take any data other than the pictures of your poop. After it takes a photo, it analyzes your poop to see your health insights. They say it is end-to-end -end encryption, but they're not a health organization, so they're not held to the same standards that a normal health company would be. 
So it can track your hydration, your gut health, and then deeper insights based off whatever is happening. All right, so is this it? Has AI gone too far on products? I know like AI this, AI that. Now we have AI in our toilet bowls. What are your thoughts? Drop a comment down below. The last one I want to talk about is something that Logan said. So Logan works at Google. He's been teasing Gemini 3 for months, but he said everyone is going to be able to vibe code video games by the end of 2025. This is going to successfully usher the next 100 million developers with ease. So many people get excited by creating games only to be hit with C, C Sharp, C++, and realize it's not fun. So this is actually an interesting one and something I want to talk about. So this is not far out of the realm of possibility. When he says vibe code games, I feel like you can already do that. It's just the level of complexity of the game itself. The vibe coding will only take you so far right now. And he's saying by the end of 2025, which is not too far away, how much better will it get? And I guess he's talking about Gemini 3. So it might be another teaser towards that. But I can tell you as a professional developer, when you're using vibe coding tools, and I have subscriptions to pretty much all of them, I can tell you as the code complexity gets bigger, it makes a lot more mistakes. So as much as I want to believe it's going to happen in the next few months, I don't think we're going to see any AAA game studios come out through just pure vibe coding. And I could be wrong, and I hope I am, because I'd love to see that ability so more people can be interested and more people can create their projects and make them come to life. But as a programmer and as someone who's done this my entire life, I just don't see it happening in the next three months. I do think it will happen over the next couple of years or longer, but in the next three months, I don't think we're going to go from like what we have right now into like full-fledged AAA actual really good vibe coded games. And I guess it depends on how you interpret Logan's post and what your takeaway is from that. So love to know what your thoughts are about all the AI news. If I missed anything big this week, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like on the video. It tells all of me enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it. Don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. AI tools, AI news, AI prompts you can use. It's all for free. Just come and see at FranklinA.com where you're meant to be.